Elsewhere and Elsewhen did not go the way I expected it to, and I say that in the most positive way possible. I knew Luz and Lilith were going to try to learn more about Philip Waterbane, but I didn't expect them to literally go back in time via a time hole and meet him face to face. Not only was Philip a lot more conniving and or selfish than Luz had hoped, he unknowingly revealed a gigantic secret about himself to the audience that, well, I'm sure a lot of people did see coming, though it was a very hype reveal nonetheless. It's extremely likely that Philip Woodabane is in fact Emperor Bellows. For those of you still doubting this idea, let me lay down the facts shown in this episode. The two of them have extremely similar personalities, to the point where Lilith was picking up the same vibes as Bellows from Philip at the collector's door, specifically saying everything he's done feels uncomfortably familiar. That's Bellows' whole thing. He gets you riled up with fake compliments or praise so you can do what he wants, then when he gets what he wants, he backstabs you. Bellows did this to Lilith when she brought him Ida, he promised to heal Ida's curse, but then went against his word. Whereas Philip had every intention to sacrifice either Luz or Lilith in order to get to the Collector's Mirror. He tried it already with that blue fang individual, but that guy didn't last long enough for Philip to take it. Philip also had that guy's palisman. Evidence number two, Lilith broke Philip's nose when she punched him, leaving it in a crooked state. Oh look, Bellows has a crooked nose too. While I'm on the topic of facial features, both of them have long hair and blue eyes. I'm living the idea of his hair changing color over the years to age. Although he's kept himself alive for thousands of years, I'm sure it was not possible for him to completely escape the natural aging process. The last scene of the episode shows Philip in his cave with a prototype of present-day Bellows' palisman on the ground, a rundown version of Bellows' white and gold robe hung on the wall, and what looks like to be early research into animating a Grimwalker, aka the kind of being Hunter might be based on the information in Bellows' book. Last but not least is Philip inhaling the magic infused with palisman in the exact same fashion as Bellows all the while talking about how he needs to live long enough to see his plans through. Oh yeah, Matthew Reese's voice, the voice of Bellos, was overlapping Philip's standard voice after he inhaled the palisman magic. And you're going to help me, Collector. I almost forgot these several glyphs on Philip's arm acting like a body morphing curse of some kind. Sound familiar? I'm tracking up Bellows gaining the pointed ears to years of endless palisman consumption. Although sackless, it's possible that he inhaled so much magic it began to alter his physical state, even if just slightly. If all that doesn't get you to believe they're the same person, I, I don't know what will. I'm sure the episode Hollow Mind is going to end up flat out confirming it. It's clear Philip has zero problem with sacrificing others if it means getting closer to his main goal. Which brings me to the topic of Philip's brother. According to legend, Philip and his unnamed brother were brought to the Boiling Isles. However, something clearly happened to his brother over the years there. We gotta keep in mind, Luz and Lilith arrived at a point in time where Philip was close to completing the Human Realm Portal. For instance, he already visited Eclipse Lake. The events surrounding his brother definitely happened before they got there. This is something I've mentioned in previous videos, but Philip's brother has a very striking resemblance to Hunter. Both of them sharing the exact same hairstyle as well as having long, somewhat protruding noses. It makes me wonder if Philip actually sacrificed his brother during one of their adventures in order to get something he needed, or wanted. Perhaps being able to overpower his brother with the use of his wild magic glyph arm. With that being the case, Bellows would have technically been telling the truth about losing family to wild magic, but at the same time, that leaves Hunter as a likely sacrifice for the Titan. If Bellows did it once before, he clearly doesn't have a problem with doing it a second time. Though it makes me wonder why it has to be Hunter. Why not someone like Kiki or Steve? Does the Titan require someone related by blood to the Day of Unity initiator in order for the ritual to be complete? Even if Hunter is a Grimwalker, Bellows still used his brother's DNA to animate Hunter into existence. Obviously, Bellows and his brother share blood since they're related. I just can't think of another reason why a Hunter has to be the one and not someone else from the Coven. Now, I want to segue into the topic of the Collector. The Collector is a very interesting one because this being seems to be someone who lives in another dimension and can only be met through very specific means. Philip believed the Collector to be the one to tell him what he needs to complete his mission. It's clear not many people know about the Collector's existence, with Ida and King in particular saying they never heard of them. Plus, they were never mentioned by name until this episode. Well, based on the design of their face looking like the moon and the sun, along with the mirror Philip had displaying various types of eclipses, it leads me to believe the Collector is able to control the patterns of both the moon and the sun. If you take the fact that Bello said the Day of Unity will occur on a day where the tide is at its lowest and the moon obscures the sun, I'm willing to bet my life savings the Collector has something to do with this eclipse of destiny. As for why this event didn't happen sooner, my guess is Bellows struck a deal with the Collector that requires Bellows to give the Collector various rare beasts slash demons. Based on the Owl Beast memories from knocking on Hootie's door, the Collector appeared to have a high interest in catching it before it escaped. This could also explain why Bellows wanted Hunter to slay the Selkie Damas and why he had an interest in 
capturing basilisk demons. Maybe for every beast Bellos fails to give the collector more time is added onto the original day of unity, there's still so much left up to interpretation. Like Philip having glyphs on his arm. Is the reason his arm deformed like that is because it's on his skin? Are glyphs just not meant to be used on the flesh of living creatures? But Philip didn't know that and had to learn the hard way of what it'll do to someone. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't recall there being an instance in the Owl House yet where someone has used a glyph on something other than an inanimate object, like a piece of paper, the ground, or the side of a building. I'm just saying. I think what bugs me the most is how on planet Earth did Bellos even lose the Human Realm Portal in the first place? If getting this thing made was so important that you were willing to sacrifice tons of Boiling Isles residents and potentially your own brother, how did it end up buried in the ground completely unattended for a young Eda to randomly snatch up? Something's not adding up here. Surely this gets explained before Season 2 ends, right? Surely. Incredibly good episode this week, though. It was nice to see Eda and Lilith's dad come to visit in present day. He's got such a calm energy to him. And is it me, or does this palisman look a lot like Flapjack? Makes me wonder if Del was the one who carved them both before Eda attacked them. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of Elsewhere and Elsewhen, if there's any other theories or speculations related to Philip slash Bellos or the Collector I didn't already mention in this video, feel free to tell me, I'd love to know your thoughts. Of course, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like down below, it helps out a ton. But for now, I will see you guys next time, peace out, take care, bye bye.